Commanders hire Dan Quinn to match with their new general manager, Adam Peters, to lead this franchise into the future. The way that we live is not for everybody, okay? It's not, all right? Because we're going to run and put our bodies on people in a violent manner. Whether the team has given us the highest of highs or the blues for blues, we'll cover it all here on Commanders Nightly News. I, of course, am your host, Louis T. Thank you for joining me. Let's get to tonight's lead story. Had a chance to watch the film with the mob. It was as painful as you would think. We'll discuss that tomorrow on our live stream. Uh, but tonight, we start the show off with the news of Austin Seibert being placed on injured reserve. Here's the kicker with an undisclosed injury. Now, not surprising that the team put Austin Seibert on IR. He just came off of an injury that cost him a couple of games with a hip injury. And so easy to connect the dots to just assume, oh, the hip wasn't fully healthy. They thought it was. It wasn't. Let's just put him on IR with the hip injury. Mm, don't know if I'm buying that. Not that it matters. Um, he didn't kick well on Sunday. And he didn't get it done. And he's been inconsistent in terms of how he was striking the football. We've had these discussions since the Ravens game. He had already kicked a couple of balls that came out funky, that somehow made its way through the uprights. And so we forgave him. But he also missed in the Ravens game because he didn't hit one good. He missed in this game because he didn't hit one good. And then he, he pushed two to the left. And that's something that he hadn't done. It's one thing to not hit it correctly and it comes out funky and you miss. Um, it's another thing to miss extra points, which he hadn't done all season long. So I, I think they are hedging their bets here with this move. Because if he just re-aggravated the hip, why not just say so? And maybe ultimately that's the move that they'll come out with tomorrow when DQ meets with the media um, on Wednesday, he might come out and say, hey, uh, yeah, yeah, it's a hit for Austin Cyber. Right? He re-aggravated it. I think that's what they're going to say. But uh, do I believe that? Mm, not really. I think this was, all right, we got Zane Gonzalez on the practice squad. We want to give him a chance. We don't want to move on from Cyber because we don't want to go back into the kicker wilderness. Because Gonzalez is not a guarantee. Right, he was on the streets for a reason. Same reason, uh, same thing for Austin Cyber. He was on the streets for a reason, right? We're finding that out now, and he doesn't have the strongest leg, this Austin Cyber. And there are deficiencies with his game. Same could be said for Zane Gonzalez. And so, I think you're just buying time essentially with this move, right? And maybe Seibert gets fully healthy, comes back, and he's the guy that was kicking for us before the injury. But remember, he wasn't making a ton of long kicks either. Now, I did make one from like 54 that kind of put me at ease. But, um, yeah, he struggled to, to hit the ball consistently. And I've, I've never seen a professional NFL kicker struggle to hit the ball like Austin Seibert has struggled this year, As, aside from Chris Blewett who was here in Washington and was awful, and he actually blew his opportunity to get back into the NFL, right? So now we're on to Zane Gonzalez, and this is what a lot of you asked for, and I'm here to tell you, be careful what you wish for. I hope Zane Gonzalez works out. In my mind, I'm, I'm pretty much saying we need to go get ourselves a quality kicker in the offseason. And whether that's signing a kicker away from another team in the offseason, drafting a kicker in the sixth or seventh round this upcoming draft, or getting an undrafted kicker and signing him as a priority free agent after the draft is concluded, whatever, we need to bring a guy in here. But I don't think you should be worrying about that now unless you have to. And that's why you put Cybert on. IR, put him on ice for a little while. Meanwhile, you got Zane Gonzalez. They'll activate him on Sunday against the Titans. And you go from there and you hope that uh, he's able to stabilize the kicking situation. And if Gonzalez kicks well, Seibert has kicked his last kick here in Washington. If he hasn't, we'll be welcoming back Austin Seibert when he's ready to come off of IR. 
So I think they're hedging their bets here with this move. Put him on IR, and if Zane Gonzalez ain't it, we can snatch Austin Seibert off of IR once that period is up. He should be fully healthy, and we'll just go with him for the remainder of the season. If Zane Gonzalez is kicking the football very well, and, and Austin Seibert is ready to come off of IR, they're just going to leave him where he is, and they're going to roll with Zane Gonzalez. So we'll see what happens. But that's the big news coming out of Ashburn today. Austin Seibert placed on IR with an undisclosed injury. A hurt ego, right? And uh, that guy was almost reduced to tears after the game on Sunday. I felt bad for him. I really did. You know, lip quivering. Uh, you know, you could hear the, the frog in his throat. Like, you know, he was holding back the tears. You could tell it affected him. I mean, he's a human. You know, I know fans are pissed off. Get rid of this guy. But he's a human, right? He feels emotion just like the rest of us. I felt bad for him. I did, but this is a business and he didn't get it done on Sunday. So I digress. Let's move on to in other news where there are a number of different topics. So cyber being um, placed on IR was done in conjunction with another roster move. And there were other movements uh, along the roster as well. Practice squad wise, et cetera, et cetera. They also worked out a corner. So let's talk about all of those moves. Then we'll get into It's That Time. It's the most wonderful time of the year. It's playoff time, everybody. It's that time. It's Thanksgiving, which means it's officially the time to bust out those playoff picture graphics. And we're dead in the middle of it, so... Not where I thought we would be after starting 7-2. and two. I thought we'd squarely be focused on just Philadelphia and trying to win this division. But uh, we've screwed the pooch on that one. And now we have to shift our focus to trying to hold off all of the degenerates be beneath us trying to get into the postseason as we try to hold on to one of these wild card spots. So we will take a look at that as well. But before we do that, let's look at all the transactions that have taken place with this team and some... Things that didn't happen but could happen, and we're going to talk about what it could be a sign of moving forward. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of those things. So let's first talk about the transactions that took place for the Commanders today. Snatch this off of X, off the Commanders X um, page. Uh, they said, we have made the following roster moves. Signed running back Chris Rodriguez Jr. So obviously you need a move in conjunction with that, which we just talked about. Austin Seibert, place kicker Austin Seibert being placed on IR, opens up the roster spot that they now are going to use for Chris Rodriguez Jr., which we all assumed would happen, right? With the injuries to both Brian Robinson Jr. and Austin Eckler, you assumed that the first guy that they would bring back would be Chris Rodriguez Jr. He was going to be brought back to the practice squad anyway. And so now he's just back to the active roster. And so he'll remain there, I think, until after the bye week, where I think you'll get both Eckler and Brian Robinson Jr. back for the Saints game, and then Rodriguez would probably be released once again. Uh, we'll see if they elevate from the practice squad at the running back position, because Michael Wiley could be on the practice squad. I think he's still there. So they just may opt to go in that direction and not go outside for more running back help. Um, so that's kind of the feel because if you were going to sign a running back, it kind of feels like you would have worked him out today and you would have signed him today, right? So it kind of gives me the feel that they're just going to roll with Rodriguez and Jeremy McNichols during the course of the week. Um, <clears throat> obviously, Michael Wiley will get some reps in there, you know, and then on Sunday, they will elevate Michael Wiley from the practice squad to give us that third running back uh, in this football game. You know, I'm excited about him. I like him a lot. So uh, there is that. But uh, they also signed defensive tackle uh, Vililimi Fioko Jr. to the practice squad and released Marquise Haynes um, from the practice squad. So obviously the sign of uh, Vililimi Fioko Jr. Uh, to the practice squad, a guy that um, this staff is very familiar with. He was a fourth round pick of the Dallas Cowboys two years ago in the draft. Um, to bring him on board, you got to get rid of somebody to create that space. Marquise Haynes, um, the guard, was the guy that is no longer on the practice squad. So uh, those moves have been made. And again, 
not signing a running back today or or not even working one out leads me to believe that they're going to handle the running back position in-house. DQ said we roll with a deep crew at that position, so I think they're confident in what they have there. Um, this one was... Um, mentioned earlier, uh, Jeremy Fowler from ESPN reported it first. Ben Standing was um, kind of putting it out there to the masses. Uh, the tweet reads, uh, the commanders worked out veteran cornerback Jerry Jacobs today per source. Uh, multiple Played multiple seasons with the Lions with Lance Newmark in the front office. And so uh, Standing goes on to mention Jacobs was a guy that he talked about in the pre-trade dr- uh, deadline story that he did for the Athletic. So uh, what does this mean here? Uh, it means that they don't love their cornerback position. One. Two, it mean, it could mean, and, and, and again, now I'm, I'm trying to connect, con, uh, connect dots that may not exist. Okay. So bear with me. You know, I like to do this. Draw inferences. Um, could mean that they're, obviously, they don't, love Emmanuel Forbes. He's out of the mix completely. It, you know, I told you they tried feverishly to trade him at the deadline. Nobody wanted him. And nobody. there is no value with Emmanuel Forbes right now. So um, they're looking for more depth at corner. Benjamin St. Juice at this point feels like a wash, right? Like almost like a guy that they already see the, the, the writing on the wall with him. And, it, it, you know, I don't think they want to necessarily move on from him. But if the opportunity presented itself, they would, right? Gave up the big catch on Sunday, continues to struggle. It could also lend itself to somebody being injured that we didn't know of after that game that cropped up. And now their their depth is like a Michael Davis, for instance, could have gotten banged up. We didn't know about it. And now all of a sudden, you know, they're thin at the cornerback position. You don't trust Forbes. You don't want to put him on the field. You don't love Benjamin St. Juice. And there's a realistic possibility that Marshawn Lattimore isn't ready yet and won't be ready until after the bye. So these are all things that you, when you see something like this, you start to ask yourself, what are you up to? Why are you doing this? Right? If you're about to get Lattimore back, you got Mike Samer still, you got uh, Michael Davis, you got Benjamin St. Juice, what do you need Jerry Jacobs for? But if somebody's banged up that we don't know about, or Lattimore isn't ready, and you need to get through this you know, final game before the bye, Juice had an injury you know, in the Eagles game, but he was able to you know, gut it out and play through it and was able to be on the field in week 12 against Dallas. But obviously he wasn't any good. And then you've got another situation where they could be, you know, done with a guy like Michael Davis. I don't know, right? They didn't sign him. So that's one thing. They just worked him out to see where he is. But it's something worth mentioning that I think they're done with Emmanuel Forbes. And I think they're at wit's end with Benjamin St. Juice, right? So I think that has happened as well. So that's something to keep on the back burner. Um... We clearly know who the three corners are when uh, Marshawn Lattimore is healthy, right? I think that's been established now. They're not moving Mike Stanley still from outside. Igbenogany is going to stay inside as the nickel. And um, I think you're going to see Marshawn Lattimore opposite of, of um, Frozone on the outside. So just a little food for thought. You guys go ahead and do the dishes. So now we transition from there to our look at the playoff picture in the NFC, which is all we care about. The AFC can do whatever they want. We care about the NFC playoff picture. So this is what it looks like. Lions at the top of the board with the one seed at 10-1. and one. Eagles right behind them at 9-2. and two. And then um, you have the Vikings at 9-2. and two. You have the Packers at 8-3. and three. Those are wild cards, however, because they play in the same division as the Detroit Lions. Uh, but not to be mistaken, it, you got to win your division to be one of the top four seeds. So it doesn't matter what your record is. If you don't win your division, you're not one of the top four seeds. So the Eagles currently are the two seed and will remain that unless they end up getting over the Detroit Lions uh, and getting the number one seed in the NFC. 
Uh, the Seahawks are currently leading the NFC West after beating the Arizona Cardinals in week 12, uh, 16 to 6. Uh, that that did something very interesting to the standings. We'll talk about that here in a second. Falcons continue to be in first place in the NFC West or South at six and five. They were on their bye week this past week, but they've been struggling here of late. Vikings, as I just mentioned, at nine and two, still in the hunt to be the number one seed uh, as they are tied or are one game back, excuse me, of the Detroit Lions in that tough, rugged, and rough NFC North. Uh, Packers are at eight and three. Um, they are the sixth seed in the conference right now at eight and three. And there are your Washington Commanders at seven and five as the seventh seed holding on to the seventh and final spot in the NFC playoffs. So what you see opposite of that graphic are all the teams in the hunt, right? Cardinals are first up at six and five. They dropped out of first place. They were in first place in the West at six and four. They lost to the Seattle Seahawks, dropping up, which is a good thing for us because guess what? We beat Arizona head to head. So if we finish with the same record, we win the tiebreaker, right? This is when that stuff starts to come into play. The Buccaneers, however, are not the same situation. They're five and six. So they've got a little bit of work to do, but. We did not beat the Buccaneers. They have a very doable schedule down the stretch, and they're more than likely going to be, unless the Falcons bottom out, the Bucs are going to be a wild card team, more than likely because, uh, or they're going to be vying for a wild card spot, rather, because they have a very doable schedule. But remember, the Falcons swept them. So the Bucs would, in effect, need to not only catch up to Atlanta, but pass them by a full game before the season ends in order to win that division. So right now, they're back of the Falcons one game, right? But it's really two because they were swept by the Atlanta Falcons. So uh, right now, the Bucks are in a, in a tough spot. And so we don't want to be in a you know wild card race with them. They beat us head to head. Rams are back at five and six. I'm not really too concerned with the Rams, to be honest with you. They're not to me. They're not a very good football team. Um, they'll beat the teams they're supposed to. I don't see them beating the teams that will pose a threat to them. So um, I feel pretty confident. The 49ers are, are still dangerous, but I think they're more in the race for the division than they are the wild card. And none of the other teams are in it anymore. Like the Saints, we play them. We got a chance to make sure that they don't, you know, rise up and try to steal something. Like, we played the Bears. We beat them. Like, the, the rest of these teams with four wins, they're not, to me, close enough. They'd have to get extremely hot, and and everybody ahead of them would have to absolutely self-destruct down the stretch. And that's just not going to happen. So, it's really just the Cardinals, the Bucks, the Rams, and the 49ers. The teams with five or more wins competing with that fifth, that seventh and final spot with the commanders. And again, I look at the Rams and the 49ers as teams that really are more so in the um, division race, which is what makes all of those NFC West teams, Seattle, Arizona, Rams, 49ers, someone's going to win that division. The other three teams that don't are going to be in the wild card chase. It would benefit us if Arizona was the the best of that group that didn't make the that didn't win the division because we beat them head to head, right? See if, if that makes sense. Um, the Bucks again, they're they're trying to win their division and they're right there. And we play Atlanta, so again, if the Bucks come back and and take the the lead in that division, we'll have a chance. That Week six, Seventeen game against Atlanta could very well be for a playoff spot. This is the predicament we've put ourselves in by losing to a team like Dallas. If we were sitting here at eight and four, we really wouldn't be having a serious conversation about any of the teams behind us. We are literally a half game ahead of the Arizona Cardinals in the wild card. So if we win this week and they win this week and then we hit our bye week and they win on our bye week, we're tied at eight and five, both teams. So... 
we put ourselves in a predicament. We did that to ourselves by losing to Dallas. So now we got to dig ourselves out of the hole that we've created. And um, it's not going to be easy because we're a different team now. We're not the team that we were earlier this season. We're a totally different team now. Adversity has set in, and we have to respond, and so far, we haven't. So, so far, we haven't. We've regressed at every position on the field, and this bye week, we need it in the worst way. I mean, it, it, it's, it, it's a really rough situation for us right now. We are struggling big time. We need this bye week, but we're not there yet. And so we got the Titans, and they're dangerous. We saw what they just did to the Texans. They're not going to lie down. I wish I was more confident, but I will tell you, everything that we want in terms of making the playoffs right there in front of us, right within reach, we just got to reach up and grab it. But how bad do you want it? That's the million dollar question now. How bad do you want it? How bad do you want it? We'll see. We'll see how bad the commanders want it. But uh, quickly, just a quick trip around the NFC East. Um, the Giants are officially number one in the draft order. So good for them. They're running the play to perfection. Tommy DeVito reportedly has an injury now and isn't 100%. And they don't know who they're going to start on Thanksgiving Day against Dallas. So they're definitely going to lose. I don't know if the Giants win another game. They look like one of the worst teams in football. I don't know if you saw the Malik Neighbors situation. That was interesting. That was fun. You know, he was chewing the hell out of that gum. Good gracious. Um, he was working that gum over. But um, if you haven't, I'll talk about that on the podcast tomorrow. Um, but they got drubbed by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Um, obviously, we played Dallas. They beat us. And the Eagles took care of business on Sunday night football versus the Rams. Eagles are going to win this division. You know, it's a foregone conclusion at this point. Um, now it's just a matter of can they get to the number one seed. They got a big matchup this week against Baltimore. That'll go a long way in determining what they do this season in terms of one seed or two seed. They're, they're not going to be any worse than the two seed in the a, 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 NFC, right? No worse than the two seed. As you can see, the other two division winners ain't worth a damn. Whoever wins the West, whoever wins the South, not going to have a great record. So they're going to be the two seed or the one seed, or the Eagles. They beat the Ravens on the road. They're probably going to be in a position to be the one seed because I think Detroit's going to lose at least one more game. At least one more game. And they both lost to Tampa. And if Detroit loses another game, it's going to be to an NFC opponent. Both of Philadelphia's losses are to NFC opponents. So it'll, it'll be really interesting what the tiebreakers are if they were to um, both finish with, you know, two or three losses. I, I think the Eagles are going to finish with either three or four losses this season. I, I think they're going to lose to the Ravens this week. If they beat Baltimore, they may not lose another game in the regular season. Um, my confidence level in us defeating them took a plummet when we couldn't take care of Dallas. But we could be a different team come, you know, bye week, right? Come off the bye, we could be a totally different team. We just got to find a way to get through this bye week, you know, get through this last game before the bye. We're tired, man. This is a tired group. They're beat up. We're dragging ass. We're dragging ass trying to get across this, this bye week finish line. Jeez, Louise. Um... Thought the, the extra couple days off was going to help. It didn't. We look like the same team that we were before that little layoff. You know, we need a full week off is what we need. And now we got injuries to compound matters. So um, we'll see what happens. But uh, I'm still confident that this team can flush November and get to December and find a way to get it done. They're in the driver's seat. They just got to not wreck the car, essentially. We'll see what happens. Anyway, I digress. So that's going to do it for this installment of Commander's Nightly News. Um, just to give you a little bit of insight as to what the week will look like, and I'll tell you this again. Um, tomorrow night, we will be live for Commander's Nightly News. It will be the last 
actual episode that I will be in the office. No fret. I will pre-record Thursday and Friday episodes for you. The only issue with that is I won't be able to give you active updates on the injuries and situations through the, the course of the week. Uh, but you'll get your Thursday episode where we go behind enemy lines. You'll get your Friday episode with the keys to the game and my prediction and all of that stuff still. But I won't be in the office as it is Thanksgiving weekend, and I'm going to spend that with my family. So uh, I will not be in the office, but you will still get uploads uh, each of those two days. But we will be live tomorrow night, and we'll chop it up there, and we'll talk all about everything, and I'll try to get as much in on that episode as I can. Um, we'll hear from DQ, we'll get our first injury report, and we'll kind of react to all of those things. Then uh, you will get an upload on the Commander's Kings channel tonight. Uh, it will not be live. And uh, this will be the last non-live episode. And then starting in December, we're going to be live moving forward. So uh, you'll get an upload. So check that out. That'll be somewhere around the, you know, the 10, 1030 hour tonight. So be on the lookout for that. And uh, I'm going to have a huge podcast episode tomorrow, big Thanksgiving episode. So uh, hopefully you'll tune in to that tomorrow. Uh, so that's, you know, the, the skinny of everything. And um, we will be back next week, back to our regularly scheduled programming, and uh, we'll hit the ground running there. The Commanders will then be on their bye week, so uh, that will be refreshing. You'll get to enjoy that week um, and take a deep breath, kind of decompress. It's been a roller coaster ride here. And, and I told you it would be before the season started. I told you it would be. I thought it was going to be more up and down, up and down, around and around, but it was all the way up. And then we got to the top, and then there was a massive steep drop. Well, now it's time to go back up. At least we hope, right? So anyway, I digress. That's going to do it for me, your man Louis T, here on Commander's Nightly News. I look forward to chopping it up with you guys next time. Until then, take care, have a good one, God bless, and good night. Here comes the diesel. Here comes the diesel. Hi, there's the snap, and to Riggins, good hole. He's got the first down to the 40. He's gone. The 40.